We're joined now by John Hassler, Professor in Economics at Stockholm University and a member of the committee that decided on this year's Economics Prize. Thanks for joining us. So this year's Economics Prize was awarded for research on banks and financial crises. Can you summarise the discoveries recognised? So what Bernanke did was to show that banks were played a central role in turning a relatively small recession into the depression in the 1930s. And that was the, the worst economic crisis that uh, the world has seen ever since. Uh, so, and that was something new at the time. Uh, so people didn't really understand that banks were so important in this very dramatic series of events. And the, the other two contributions by, by Diamond and Dupig and Diamond, they are more theoretical. So they set up models trying to explain why banks both are important so that when they are not there, things, the economy doesn't work. And why they are vulnerable. And also, what can be done about this vulnerability. So we think that these theoretical contributions and uh, Bernanke's work on what was actually happening in, the, in reality during the 30s, that fits together very well. And why was now the time, in your opinion, to recognize these laureates? So we don't make, we don't take these kinds of things in consideration whether it's a timely prize or not. Uh, the, the reason is that we think that this is a great price uh, and that we now had come to a point where we had investigated everything around the price motivations and so on. So we don't make judgment of whether a price is timely or not. There were a lot of questions during the press conference though about how it does feel quite timely during a period of yeah. economic stability at the moment. That's right. What do you think we can learn from the research at this particular point in time? So we can learn a lot. Uh, we can learn how important it is to make sure that the services that banks and also many other institutions that does similar things, namely transferring savings to productive investments, how important it is to make sure that this system doesn't collapse. Because if it does, it has dramatic consequences and they are very long lasting. So, so, so the crisis, the financial crisis in, 20, in 2008, 2009, that could have turned into a depression. The, in the early phases of the pandemic, so say in February, March uh, of 2020, we had similar developments. Hadn't those been stopped, things had gone, could have gone as bad as they did during the 30s. So from the lawyers, we understand why it's important to make sure that that doesn't happen. And we also can understand kind of the dynamics uh, surrounding these kinds of events and what to do about it. So, so it's true that it is very timely. Uh, but, uh, and that, of course, is nothing that we are <laughs> unhappy with. But it was not the reason for giving the prize this year. Tell us a little bit more about the laureates, all three of them working in the US. That's right. So uh, Ben Bernanke, um, what can you tell us about him? So Ben Bernanke uh, uh, was the head of the US Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, and actually also during the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. Uh, we don't judge whether he was a good central banker or not. Uh, but what we do know is that his research was an input in the sense that he really knew how bad things can go if you don't handle a financial crisis. And, and the, he, the work that he did as a policymaker clearly um, rests on the fundamental insights from the laureates of, of how these things work and what to do about it. And uh, Douglas W. Diamond and Philip uh, Divig. Divig. Divig, working together. Um, tell us a bit more about their their work. So they uh, they uh, so one of the we 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 um, recognised three papers basically three contribu contributions in three papers from the early eighties and in in one of them Diamond and Divig worked together uh, showing how important the function that bank and bank-like institutions have when they basically turn short-term uh, assets like deposits into long-term loan commitments as working as middlemen. And, and this is what banks do, but it's also what 
institutions outside the regulated banking system. Uh, and, 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 and they showed that this is a very important role uh, that needs to be taken for the economy to work well, but that it also is vulnerable. This, this system, this, this business idea, which is called, by the way, maturity transformation, taking short-run deposits and turning them into long-term loan. That's called maturity transformation, and that's very good, but it's also vulnerable. If, uh, if, uh, if a rumor starts that a bank is about to have problems, uh, it's in everyone's incentive to run to the bank and to get out their money, not to stand last in line to the bank. And this, this can be a self-fulfilling prophecy, so that even a bank that is kind of fundamentally sound can have these problems. And, and that was the root of the problems in the 30s. And, 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 and what Diamond and Dibbig was, was to kind of show theoretically this kind of dynamics, and also what to do about it. So, so one of the things that you can do is to introduce a deposit insurance. So if the government uh, insures every, insures every uh, depositors, then if you hear a rumor like the one I just was talking about, then there's no, no need to rush to the bank because the government is guaranteeing this. And this kind of makes sure that short circuits the dynamics of the bank run and, and make the bank more stable and so that they can do their, their, their operations. Um, the problem, though, uh, is that the banking system and the financial system evolves. Uh, so during the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, bank-like institutions had been starting to do things outside of the regulated system, and they didn't have any deposit insurance. And, and some of the researchers in this area said that this is dangerous. We can have run bank runs on non-banks. These are often called shadow banks. And this is actually exactly what happened. Uh, and at the time, then Ben Bernanke saw what was happening and, and tried to make sure that the, the financial system didn't break down completely uh, by providing, by helping banks and providing liquidity to them and so on. And, and that, I think, uh, at least we don't make a judgment on it, but it's a, it's a, it's a common, commonly held belief that that saved the world from, from a depression. So how have the laureates reacted uh, to being awarded the prizes? We have only so far been able, been able to speak to, to uh, Dog Diamond. Uh, so the others we, we haven't managed to contact yet. But we, so we'll, hear, we'll, probably, we'll probably see them calling us uh, soon. Mm. And for people that didn't hear his reaction on the call earlier, what was his response? But it's four o'clock in the morning, so, so people when they are, you know, I think that many, many, many thoughts are circling in the heads of a person if, if one gets a call from Stockholm saying that they have become uh, uh, Nobel laureates. Uh, so, so he didn't say very much, but of course he was very happy. And what kind of reaction are you expecting to get from other economists, experts, banks, particularly given that this is a very topical uh, subject? Well, we have worked for many, several years on this, and we now think that we have a very good prize, and, and we hope that uh, uh, the rest of the world will, will share, share the view that these uh, laureates are, are very, very well deserved. And if you could just summarize why you're so excited about this year's prize in just a few 10 to 30 seconds to help us wrap things up. Because financial crises and depressions are kind of the worst things that can happen to the economy. It created starvation during the 30s, even in the richest economies of the world. So these things can happen again, and we need to have an understanding of the mechanism behind those and what to do about it. And the laureates this year provides that. Professor John Hassler, thank you so much for joining us and telling us more about this year's laureates. Thank you.